Father, we thank you. King of kings, Lord of There is no one that can be compared to you. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega, you are the beginning, you are the ending. You are the first and the last. You are the one who has kept us alive. You are the one who has protected us, provided for us, and even brought us into your presence again tonight. Lord, we ask that your presence will be mighty in our midst. Even those who are watching us online, Father, let your presence also be with them. As we continue tonight in today's Digging Deep service, Father, please let your awesome wonder work miracles in all our lives. And at the end of it all, let only your name be glorified. We thank you, Father. Please accept our worship and take all the glory. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed and the people of god we say a louder amen even as you take your seat just welcome your neighbor to the right and to the left and tell them welcome to your father's house we also want to welcome all those who are online we also pray that god's presence will touch you will bless you and your life will never remain the same there will be evidence of a touch of God in your life, in your family, in the mighty name of Jesus. It's yet another glorious day in his presence. And I believe that for every one of us here, even those who are online, God will show up for us all. Amen. And cause all our worries, our anxieties, our problems, delays, frustrations. He will turn them around into victory and joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Today shall be a day of encounter for you. And if you are the one, I want to hear your amen in confirmation. As you have come into God's presence, lacking nothing good whatsoever in the name of Jesus. Everything that is good, everything that is glorious, everything that is peaceful, Everything beautiful, excellent, and rewarding shall happen for you and your family in this season in the name of Jesus. God's word will cause a transformation in your life even tonight in the name of Jesus. As you press towards the goal in this season, amen, God will provide all the supports that you need to achieve success in the mighty name of Jesus. And you shall triumph above all expectations in the name of Jesus Christ. So tonight, I want to welcome you to today's Digging Deep service. Amen. And I pray that you shall receive a blessing even today in the name of Jesus. By God's grace, tonight we are going to continue in part three of the theme, Staying Focused with Christ's Goals. So we are going to continue with part three tonight and tonight we shall um, lay emphasis or we shall be emphasizing on how christ's goals can enable you to achieve success in life praise the name of the lord so we continue in part three tonight our anchor text for tonight is taken from genesis chapter 39 verses 2 to 6 genesis 39 from verses 2 to 6 i'm going to read the new king james version the word of god says that the lord was with joseph and he was a successful man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord made all he did to prosper in his hand so joseph found favor in his sight and served him then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. Verse 5. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house, and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all 
that he had in the house and in the field. First, he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now, Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Father, we want to thank you again for such an opportunity to come before you to learn at your feet. Lord, we ask that you give us retentive memory. You open our eyes of understanding. Your presence will be mighty in our midst. The Spirit of God will move in our midst and make all things to come to our understanding. Lord, we ask that as your word will come forth even tonight, it will lead to a better life for each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. There will be transformation, there will be healing, there will be deliverance, there will be insights, there will be revelation. And Lord God will be strengthened and equipped for great success in all our dealings in the name of Jesus. At the end of it all, only you will take all the glory and our blessings will be in multiples. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So tonight we proceed in part three of the team. Stay focused with Christ's goals. And we shall be focusing on Christ's goals, on how Christ's goals can help us to achieve success in life. But before we dig in, amen, because you know we're in digging deep service, we're in Bible study. Before we dig in and begin to look at what the word of God uh, is, uh, has prepared for us tonight, I would just want to refresh our memory with a little bit of a recap. So we started in part one by identifying what the goals of Christ Jesus are. And we looked at Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Luke 4, verse 18. And we listed some of the goals of Christ. And we said, number one, to preach the gospel, which speaks to evangelism and soul winning. Said number two, to heal the brokenhearted, which speaks to his nature of compassion and sacrifices. Number three, these are the goals I'm reeling out. Number three, to set captives free from bondage. And this speaks to deliverance from all forms of oppression of the devil and his agents, those wicked devil and his agents. Then we said number four, the goals of Christ to recover the through his word on how we truly are and what our expectations are meant to be. And number five goal that we saw from Luke chapter 4, verse 18, number five, is to set at liberty those who are oppressed, those who are oppressed. And this speaks to, to being free to be whoever you want to be without any form of limitation, no barriers, no oppression from any quarter whatsoever. Amen. So we summarize all these goals and concluded that when we build the goals of Christ in our own lives, they form the core of our character, our attitude, our temperament, and of course, what we believe, which is referred to as our belief system. We said that in doing these things, taking up the goals of Christ, we indirectly position ourselves into success. Amen. And on the other hand, when we fail to imbibe these goals of Christ into our lives, there's a lot of distractions and failures that may occur in such a life. By the grace of God, last week, we continued in part two, and we focused on how to develop your character, amen, with the goals of Christ. So we're talking about development of character last week. And we put emphasis on your thoughts, the things that you believe in, Amen. And those things will motivate your actions and your actions will showcase your behavior. That's what we talked about last week, you know. And we said that your behavior over a period of time builds up the character that you possess. So we're looking at how um, the goals of Christ can develop our character. 
So we went further to discuss how these things would be. And we mentioned the following. We said, number one, evangelism, telling others about Jesus Christ, will make you a moral compass for others, building your character. We said that we need to express compassion to others. Amen. We talked about exposing the truth of the word of God to other people, the people that don't know. We also touched on show love to your neighbors. And we ended up speaking about humility. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So tonight, we're focusing on how Christ goes will help you to achieve success in life. And that is part three of the theme, stay focused with Christ goals. So to best describe success is to say that success is the accomplishment of your desired goals. You know, well, I just try to look for the simplest way, you know, without any big, big grammar, just something that all of us will understand. So before you can say that you are successful in any area, you must have accomplished the set goals that you have put in place. Amen? So when you attain the goals that you have set out to do, and they are accomplished, they are done, they are fulfilled, then you can say that you, are, you have succeeded. Praise the name of the Lord. Now looking at our anchor scripture in Genesis 39, verse 2 to 6, we were talking about Joseph. That's what that scripture is recorded about. It's about Joseph and, you know, we find out that Joseph was in a very precarious situation. He was sold into slavery and must have had a feeling of betrayal. Betrayal and abandonment. But he never gave up on his goals, which was to please God. So the goals of Joseph, apart from his vision that he had seen earlier, God had shown him, you know, in dream, in vision, he had a glimpse of what his future will be. But in all of that, the number one thing that Joseph held to his heart, that nothing could change, something that he guarded with all form of, of with all jealousy, protecting it, it was that he wanted to make sure that he pleased God. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Christ's goals are all targeted at pleasing God. All the things I've been talking about from part one, even till the end when we finish, is all targeted at one thing and one thing only to please God. And to carry on as a true ambassador to Christ, wherever you find yourself. So Joseph found himself as a slave. Unfortunately, in a strange land where perhaps nobody knew him. Nobody knew him. But of course, God was with him and he ensured he never let God down. Some of us, we might go to places where nobody knows us. And when we go there, because we believe that nobody knows us, all of a sudden, our character changes. All the belief system that has held us, the, the, the fabric of our belief, the core of our character that has been built up in Christ, all of a sudden, you just dump it because you feel that nobody knows you. I told us an example that we traveled to Germany. No, I thought nobody knew me there. Myself and my wife. We're just playing around, lovey, lovey, in the mall. And from the escalator, somebody started shouting, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. You know, once I hear Pastor, you know, I usually turn because <laughs> people call me Pastor. So I turned. It was somebody in the church, all the way fine in Lishon, in Lishon Remo. The girl was there. And she ran down, held us everywhere. She was hugging me most for me. And she said, ah, what of uh, my wife? I said, see her here now. Ah, she hugged her. So after all the pleasantries and the greetings and everything, how is this person? How is that person? How, what are you doing here? I'm doing my PhD. Wow, wow. After all the wows, she left. And I told my wife, I said, so if I had carried one CC, 
Nobody knows me in Germany. Uh, this is my first time. Uh, I just sneaked in. Nobody knows me. Check, they would have seen and look at Pastor. So that's what Joseph experienced. Nobody knew him. He came to a strange land as a slave, but he still held on to his values, his character, the core fabric of his behavior. Praise the name of the Lord. He found himself in a strange land and he held on to what he believed in. It was his resilience in pleasing God that made him successful in all things to the extent that his master left all under his control. That's what we read. He left all under his control because all that he did prospered. Amen. And his master benefited from his prosperity even as a slave. Now, he didn't prosper because he was a slave. He didn't prosper. He didn't prosper because his brethren had betrayed him. He didn't prosper. Because some of us, we think that when we carry on an atmosphere of pity, oh, they enslaved me. Somebody had oppressed me. Somebody took what was my own birthright. Somebody has taken what belongs to me. So therefore, I am, you know, I am no longer, I, I am, I have missed my opportunity. You know, the, my privileges have gone. It's a misfortune of my life. Then, because of that, God will now have pity on you and now begin to cause you to prosper. That was not the case. The reason why Joseph prospered was because he pleased God. So, if you want to write it down, you write it down. Because you need to understand certain core things that you need to do for your own success to come about. And that's what we're trying to look at tonight. So he prospered because he pleased God. God's presence can also go with you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Amen. But the question is, are you willing to please him in all that you do? Because if you are willing to please him, then I can assure you, your success will surely come. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So I pray that we will build our lives on the goals of Christ so that all of us, including me, every one of us, can please God in all our dealings so as to achieve the success in all that we do. So going further tonight, beloved, let us see how Christ's goals can help us to achieve success. That's what we'll look at in the few minutes that we have. So, we're going to take off from where we left last week, from last week's uh, uh, study. You know, so we'll look at the um, goals that we mentioned when we're talking about building our character. I will look at how these same goals can help us to achieve success. Because remember, we are talking about the goals of Jesus. Amen? If we imbibe them into our lives, into our character, our behavior, how will they equip us? How does he help us to attain success in our dealings? So number one, from evangelism. Because we started from evangelism, so I'm going back there, from evangelism. How can evangelism help you to achieve success in your own life. When you take up the goal of evangelism, as Christ has instructed, that we go into the world and preach the gospel, making disciples and baptizing them, you set yourself up for great success. You become identified as a crusader of moral and godly tendencies. You become identified as a crusader of moral and godly tendencies. And this will make people to trust you. You see, those of us who are Christians, and they know us as Christians, you see, there's a different way that they approach us. Am I lying? There's, there are things that you will do. They will say, ah, how can you do this? Ah, but not you now. Not you now. Or they come to you and say, ah, look, oh, please, it's you that can... Um, judge this matter or is you that can handle this case see what this person has done or say no 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 this money that we are contributing ah, it's only you that can hold it 
Why? Because of your godly and moral tendencies that they know you as a crusader of the word of God. Evangelism. You are always talking about how to get closer to God, bringing people to the light of God, talking about godly things. So people begin to trust you. Even unbelievers, people on the other faith, they will trust you. Because everybody knows that God is all about things that are good. Even the sinner, they know. They know. So they trust you. This is one of the major benefits of a true minister of God. Amen? Not only that, you receive a blank check for answered prayers from God. When you partake in evangelism. So how does it allow you to become successful? It allows you to become successful because every of your prayers will be answered. Now, if all your prayers are answered, what obstacle, what barrier? Because prayers are usually asking God to intervene, to help you, to restore you, to fight your battles, to give you victory, to give you insight. And all these numerous prayers are all answered. If God can answer all your prayer, your level of success will be unprecedented. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. And we know from our, that's our declaration now, John 15 verse 16. John 15 verse 16. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that all your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in the name of Jesus, he may give to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the fellow who has this blank check, surely, surely, the success will be unprecedented. It is an account of evangelism that you can achieve this great privilege. You will agree with me that if God should answer all your prayers, petitions and desires, your level of success will be glorious. And I pray that will be your portion and my portion in the name of Jesus. Now, number two, from compassion. From compassion. Amen? How can compassion help you to achieve success in all your dealings? Like we discussed last week, compassion is one of the goals of Christ Jesus. And it continues even to today, that's Jesus, it continues to show us compassion. Remember, he's seated at the right hand of God the Father, and he continues to plead on our behalf, advocate for us, to make to see that everything that we ask for, God answers us. Amen? So his compassion is there till today. It is upon this compassion that we enjoy his grace, his forgiveness, his healing, and even much more. His unconditional love has propelled him to die on the cross for us as sinners is a show of an unprecedented level of compassion. When you exhibit this goal in your own life, you too will begin to attract blessing and it will be a good record for all to see. This will surely attract helpers from far and near. Matthew 25, 34 to 45. Matthew 25, 34 to 45. It says then, the king will say to those at his right hand, come, you blessed of my father, inherit the, the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Matthew 25, 34 to 45. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Father, Lord, when do we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When do we see you a stranger and took you in or naked and clothe you? Or when do we see you sick or in prison and came to you? And the king will answer and say to them, assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to the least of my brethren, you did it to me. You did it to me. In other words, the compassion that you are showing to the people around you, you are not doing it to them or for them in, in a belief that they will come and pay back. True compassion 
is done because you are doing it for Jesus. And there's a reward for it. Likewise, it will say to those who on the left side, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his agents. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me naked and you did not clothe me sick or in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? And we did not minister to you. Then we answer them saying, and surely I say to you, in as much as you did it to, you did not do it to the least of this, you did not do it to me. And this will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. You see, one thing that strikes me in this scripture is that those people that they pushed away because they refused to show compassion, it means that they had the opportunity to do so and they refused to do it. It means that they had enough food to give out, but they did not give it out. It's not talking about, oh, sac don't eat your own, just sacrifice everything. You had the opportunity to be of help to the next man, but you refused. That's why you see people that refuse to help others. They think that they are oppressing you, but they are only destroying their own success. And that's what I'm driving at tonight. So don't think because you are privileged or you are an opportunity and other people are looking up to you and you begin to have high headedness, you are on a high horse, it's only me, you know, I will show you, I will deal with you. You are only blocking your own success. Because those things that you are meant to do in compassion to others, you are doing it unto Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ will come and say, give me water to drink, are you going to say no? Why wouldn't you say no? Because you know that he is the source of your blessing. He is the source of your promotion. He is the source of life. He is the source of your mercy. He is the source of everything that is good. Everything that is good, that is good comes from above. So if you refuse to give him, how will he give you? So you see, we have to have understanding. If you partake in compassion, what are you doing? You're just opening the door to your own success. God will give us more understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, we're still looking at the things that we can do, the goals, the goals of Christ that can help you to achieve success in your own life. Number three, quickly, I'll move a little fast now. Number three, from exposing the truth of God's word. From exposing the truth of God's word. Remember that the word of God is the truth. And it stands over and above everything else. No matter the fact that you may claim, the truth of God's word will always stand. So when you expose the truth, it means that you first of all discover it. Are you following tonight? Before you can expose the truth of God's word, of God's word, you yourself must have discovered the truth. Amen. You must have discovered it. And it is what you have discovered that you are likely to expose. Amen. So when you discover the truth of God's word that relates to your promotion your being established, your protection, your increase, your prosperity, will you not surely appropriate it for yourself? Surely. In other words, if you are going to engage in exposing God's truth to other people, what you discover, you will appropriate it. Because if I find out that God is telling me that I can never be poor, I will first of all claim it before I will come and tell you. It's just natural. It's natural. If you find a treasure, are you going to say, oh, I've discovered a treasure. Let me carry it and give it. You will first of all satisfy yourself. And you see, the treasure of God is, it cannot be finished. So you cannot say, I will consume it all. You just take, your own taking is nothing. Amen? 
So you will appropriate these same truths that you find out. You will benefit from the truth yourself. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You are going to benefit from the truth that you find out in the word of God. And it's from that benefit that you can tell others. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. That's why they tell us, just tell them what God has done for you. And you hear when people come and give testimony. Oh, I was barren for 10 years. I waited on the Lord. And all of a sudden, God did it for me. Somebody will say, eh, me that was barren for 15. God, if you did it for this sister, that is 10 years, I have you must do my own. What are they saying? The truth of what God has done for them is what is causing the other fellow to demand his own blessing or her own blessing. When you find out that somebody that had sickle cell disease came out and said, God touched me and healed me, and you have been battling that same ailment. You say, ah, so God can do this. Your faith is now kindled up. And you begin to demand, God, your prayer will not change. As you did it for sister, so, 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 brother, so, 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 do my own. That's it. That is it. So, the, when you expose the truth of God's word, it opens your eyes and you who sees it, you are going to benefit from it. So the truth of God's word will help you yourself to make success. Praise the mighty name of God. Just one example. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. It tells us, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet, for your sake, it became poor. That through his poverty, you might become rich. This is the word of God. So, someone who is battling poverty and believes that, oh, because of the family I come from, or because of the location, or because of my age, or maybe something that they did in my generation, I can never be this word of God. Everything will turn around. There will be a liberation and you can break that yoke. And you can also show somebody else. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Now, quickly, from loving your neighbor. Number four now. From loving your neighbor. How can loving your neighbor help you to succeed in your own life? Amen? Uh, uh, um, the goal of Christ in your life will turn you into a man or a woman of peace. Peace is desirable for success. And the one who encourages peace will always be sought after. A man who is troublesome, a woman who is troublesome, we find it extremely difficult to love his or her neighbor. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9, Matthew 5 verse 9, Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. A peacemaker will find it easier to achieve his or her goals in life because he or she will find little or no resistance from others. Somebody who is a peacemaker, that everybody knows to be a peacemaker, they are always, you know, they, they have little or no resistance from people around them. But when somebody that is troublesome, somebody that exhibits wicked tendencies, People always want to block their way. That is just real. People always want to. You see, all what I'm telling us today is what we already know. But we are just emphasizing it so that we know what to do. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. It says, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven as an abomination to him. It says, a proud look, a lying tongue hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and the one who sows discord among brethren. A troublemaker. God doesn't like them. Amen? God doesn't like them. Proverbs 12 verse 20. Proverbs 12 verse 20. It said, Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counsel us. Of peace have joy. In other words, those troublemakers, they will not find joy. They will not find joy. Success will be far. You are causing trouble. Some people, they are stuck in trade is to cause problems for other people. And God doesn't like them. 
Amen. So if you are a troublemaker or you say, oh, I'm the uh, toughest, you know, you are always causing problem and trouble for others. How do you expect to succeed in your own life? And the flip side of it, if you are a peacemaker, you are peaceful, you love your neighbor, amen, your success will come much easier because the resistance will be little. Some people have problems in their life because other people are resisting them. They are resisting them. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Quickly, because of time, I'll just go to the final one, number six, which is from humility. So how can you succeed in life from the goal of humility? Humility is another goal of Jesus Christ that will ensure that you succeed in life when you walk in it we have seen how many big mighty the big and the mighty amen how they fall from greatness on account of pride this is because god himself resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble god resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble james chapter 4 and verse 6 now, the main question here is what is grace? Because it looks as if it's the grace that God gives to the humble that makes all the difference. So what is this grace? You know, if you remember some months ago, we talked about grace. Now, grace is all that has to do with God empowering you. Bringing favor your way. Putting things in place so that you can fulfill his will and purpose concerning you. You don't have any contribution in grace. It's not about your works. It's not about you. It's not about where you come from. It's not about what you have done. It is all that God brings your way. His power, his splendor, his connections, his favor, everything that God will provide for you. In Align you and helping you to fulfill his will concerning you. And that's what's grace. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. Every strength, connection, favor, everything that you need to succeed is all embedded in the grace of God. So when we say that God gives grace to the humble, it means that everything that you will need for your success when you humble yourself, God will give it unto you. So the more grace you enjoy, the more successful you are going to be. In other words, the more humble you are, the more humble you are, the more successful you are going to be. Praise the name of the Lord. And the more proud you are, the more you will fall into failure. Praise Master Jesus. So in conclusion tonight, the more of Christ goes in you, the better position for success you become. Everybody desires to be successful in life, but attaining all their goals is not a joke. Joseph had a dream or a vision of greatness, but all things work against him. Everything worked against him, fulfilling that great dream. I'm sure at the, the, when he was going through those process of slavery and all that, he might have given up. I said, well, maybe this is not going to come to pass. Amen? From envy to betrayal to slavery to false accusation and finally he landed in prison. Only one person. But in all of this, he ensured that he continued to please God. He ensured. Amen? Even in prison, the friendship that he made, the friend also forgot about him. He forgot him until God arose on his behalf. Amen. And just one attempt, his success overtook everything that was difficult in his life. Beloved, if you can hold on to the goals of Jesus Christ, if you can continue to please God 
in the face of trials, in the midst of temptation, in the, in the, in the challenge of life, betrayals, wickedness, you know, all manner of things that life throws at you. If you can hold fast in pleasing God, all these goals I've been discussing, if you can keep them in the core of your character, I can tell you, your success will be unprecedented. Praise the mighty name of the Lord. So, before we pray tonight, amen, and before we go into the session of question and answer, one sure way to ensure that you please God is by surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. Let nobody deceive anybody. And let me tell you the truth. There is no way you can please God until the grace and salvation of Christ Jesus is speaking for you. Nobody can please God on his own. You cannot. Amen? God must come, you must come into that grace that Jesus Christ is providing. He says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14 and verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you can allow yourself to submit to the supremacy of Jesus Christ, the grace and the strength and the ability to please God will be empowered into your life. And that's why I'm making this call tonight. That anyone here under the sound of my voice, whether you are sitting here in the church or you are watching online, and you have not surrendered to Jesus Christ. The tendency is that you will fail God. The tendency is that you will not be able to please God. The tendency is that you will not want to have anything to do with evangelism. The tendency is that compassion will be like a story, a fairy tale to you. The tendency is that you will not be able to love your neighbor. In fact, you will be an oppressor to your neighbor. The tendency is that you will be proud and you will not have any form of humility. And your success might just be a mirage. So tonight, if you will surrender your life to Jesus, you will be on your journey to success. So what all is about, if there's anyone that wants to make that, to answer that call quickly, this is the moment. You want to say, Father, I'm surrendering to you. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me from my iniquities. I need you in my life. Here I am. Anyone like that, quickly, so that we can pray tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Perhaps you are online. You can make up your mind. God is everywhere. Wherever you are watching from, he can see you. Amen? So if you are going to pray that prayer, it's a very short prayer. You just pray and say, Father, forgive me for all my sins. Wash me with your blood. Tell him in prayer that, please, I am sorry for all my sins. Pray again and say, Father, I believe that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And you say, Oh Lord, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. And beginning from now, come and be my Lord and my Savior. And put me on the path of success. So that my tomorrow will be greater than my today. And so shall it be for you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So let's be on our feet as we wrap up tonight with a few prayers. Amen. Then we can go into the session of questions and answer. So please, let's um, come to be on our feet even as we pray together. Father, we want to thank you for another glorious and refreshing time in your presence tonight. Lord, we ask that you accept our thanks. And please multiply your blessings in all our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, I pray that you will lead us in the path of success so that we can have a more glorious future in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, please open our eyes of understanding to know all that we need to entrench in our character that will lead us to our success in the name of Jesus. I pray 
that as we continue to press forward in this month of pressing towards the goal, Lord God, we shall break all forms of barriers, all forms of limitations to our glorious successes in the mighty name of Jesus. Let all these things be pulled down by your power in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, in this season of our lives, position us all for great success and please let all failures of the past never occur again in our lives, in our families, in our destinies, in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh Lord, that we all remain humble, even as you grant us abundance of grace for greatness and success in all areas of our lives, in the name of Jesus. And Father, please make us complete in you, and let us not lack anything good in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen amen, amen and amen let's clap for jesus <laughs> hallelujah praise the name